This video is sponsored by Soul Worker, an awesome new anime action MMO. The world lies broken and shattered after the grand catastrophe, and only the Soul Workers can save the planet. These chosen few have developed superhuman powers and are our final hope for survival. Hack, slash, and combo your way through over 100 post-apocalyptic dungeons as your favorite flashy anime hero. She's my favorite. There's even four-player co-op so your friends can join in on the adventure too. And did I mention? This entire experience is free! Yeah! Soul Soul Worker is a free-to-play game on PC and Steam. Click the link in the description to check out and download the game. The fate of the world is in your hands. One of the most unique sequels to a popular video game was Super Mario Bros. 2, a game where Mario and friends picked vegetables out of the ground and threw them at enemies. Meanwhile, in Japan. Ninki naru video game no moto mo kyomu bukai zoke no watsu wa Super Mario Brothers 2 deshita sore wa hijon ni chozon deki deshita ga originaru ni niti imashita Wait, hold on a second. There are two Super Mario Bros. 2? You can't have that. Two sequels claiming to be the follow-up to the original Mario Bros? Which one's canon? Two countries believe two different things. Well, what if I told you that both of these games are directly connected to one another, and both act as the true sequel. How can that be exactly? Well, let's find out together! So I think the story of how Super Mario Bros. 2 came about is pretty common knowledge at this point. If you don't know, the super super quick version is... In Japan, there was a game called Doki Doki Panic. Nintendo of America then looked at that and said, No! It's now Mario 2. Deal with it. While in Japan, an actual Super Mario Bros. 2 was made, essentially keeping the same look and feel of the original. It was simply... Mario! Only, it was a lot harder. So, why do I bring all of this up? Well, like I said before, it's because we live in a world where two Super Mario Bros. 2 exist, and we need to find out which one is the true sequel. And well, like I said earlier, what if both of these games are indeed the true sequels, being directly connected to one another? Let me show you what I mean. In Super Mario Bros. 2, this one, it's revealed that at the end of the game, the entire adventure was... all just Mario's dream. And in his dream, Luigi, Princess Peach, and Toad were all competent fighters and amazing heroes, equal to the same level as Mario. Some people believe that dreams are the window into our unconscious and a manifestation of our deepest desires. And here, Mario is dreaming of his friends, being more than just another person, or a damsel in distress, or even a sidekick. Mario doesn't see that. Instead, he truly believes that his friends are capable of being so much more. Heroes. They even have special abilities that even he doesn't have in his dream. Peach can float, Toad runs fast, and Luigi... Luigi is interesting, because here, he jumps really high! He has the highest jump out of everyone! It's possible that this is a metaphor for how Mario sees his younger brother, being able to reach new heights that even he can't achieve. Now, this is where the Japanese Super Mario Bros. 2 comes into play. When you start up the game, you're given the option between a Mario game and a Luigi game. You can't play two players anymore? You could in the first game, as well as the third and Super Mario World. But here, you're all alone, with two options. The most interesting choice is obviously Luigi, considering, at this point, he wasn't really well known. There was more intrigue to play as the other brother. So, let's choose Luigi. So, okay, Luigi is now off to save the princess. Alone. There isn't a multiplayer option, so selecting Luigi means it's all up to him to save the day. To be the hero that the Mushroom Kingdom needs. But where's Mario? Mario's never been one to slack off responsibility. Even in Super Mario Sunshine when he was framed, he still accepted his punishment. 
Well, it's possible that while Luigi is out on the adventure, Mario is at home, sleeping the day away. But why? Is he lazy? Mario's never been one to skimp out on an adventure. So maybe... Maybe it's possible that Mario wanted Luigi to break out of his shell and become the hero he knows he can be to reach those new heights that he dreams of. So, he purposefully stayed home to let Luigi carve his own path. And wouldn't you know, in the Japanese Mario 2, Luigi, in fact, does reach those new heights. Literally and figuratively. Literally because he can jump higher than Mario, but figuratively because he's now traversing this dangerous landscape on his own, no longer being Mario's sidekick but transforming into that hero that his brother knew he could have been all along. So it's fitting that Luigi has a high jump in this game, as well as in Mario's dream. But in the following games to come, Luigi wouldn't have that ability anymore, since Mario would be joining back on the adventures. So the fact that he can do it in these two games that both happen to be named Super Mario Bros. 2 and have a hidden story that is possibly connected to one another leads me to believe that both of these games are the true sequels to Super Mario Bros. One can't exist without the other. They act as a story showing how Mario truly feels about his brother wanting him to come out of his shell and be great. Or, who knows, maybe I'm wrong, and this is all just one big coincidence. But hey, it sure makes for one heck of a story. Let me know what you think of this. And you go out there and be the Luigi I know you can be.